So <clears throat> now we enter the world of kind of time series modeling I can say and remember the goal of modeling is prediction, right? That means the series should have something in it for us to predict. Therefore, the first step in modeling is to determine if there is predictability in the series and that is what we are going to discuss and also we will uh, remind ourselves that we are working with linear models. We are not talking of general predictability here. What we want to test is whether the series has anything in it that allows us to build linear models. In other words, we are going to work with covariances. We have already seen that covariance is a measure of linear dependence. So what we have is essentially a signal, an infinitely long signal, right? Here you have and now we will shift over to this V notation, Vk minus 1, Vk, Vk plus 1 and so on. And I would like to see if the series is predictable. In other words, uh, in a linear sense. So what I am going to use is a measure of linear dependence which is covariance and I am going to examine the covariance between any two observations and then see if there is, uh, if any two observations are correlated. So for this purpose we introduce this autocovariance function. At the heart of this autocovariance function we have covariance as a measure, you should not forget that. There is nothing more complicated about this. I am given a series, the first step that I want to uh, uh, make is, uh, is to determine whether there is predictability in the series and we use covariance as a measure of predictability or dependence. If there is dependence then that means there is a scope for predictability. So this autocovariance as you can see even yesterday we had introduced this is covariance between any two observations of a random process Vk, K1 and K2. Again we have slightly, uh, we have used a slightly diluted notation here. It is the expectation of Vk minus mu K1 times Vk2 minus mu K2. In other words, it is simply covariance between Vk1 and Vk2. This is a very generic definition assuming the process to be non-stationary. When the process is stationary, at least second order stationary, then in distribution then we know that the second order stationary processes are only dependent on the time difference that is a joint distribution of a pair of observations is only dependent on the time difference not at the time instance and that the mean remains invariant with time. Therefore, we satisfy ourselves, we kind of work with a slightly relaxed version of this definition where we drop the subscripts on mu and essentially we say now sigma is a function of the lag L rather than K1 and K2. But if you have a non-stationary process, you should fall back to the original definition which we won't at this moment uh, and for many lectures to come. So now the autocovariance function sigma VV at L is nothing but expectation of Vk minus mu times Vk minus L minus mu. Now I should caution, uh, give you a couple of cautions but I will talk about it uh, tomorrow. Let me conclude today's lecture in the interest of time that this autocovariance function is not a mysterious function. If you have understood the covariance very well, then you have understood the autocovariance function fairly well. What we mean by this is, remember covariance is uh, an unbounded measure, it is a symmetric measure, it is a measure of linear dependence and it does not tell me whether one causes the other. All of uh, these properties hold for the covariance. Autocovariance function inherits all those properties. The autocovariance function therefore is symmetric with respect to lag L. It does not tell me whether Vk minus L is influencing Vk or Vk is influencing Vk minus L. But since you assume that the already that there is a flow of time, here the causation is kind of taken care of. That is not an issue. Right? We, we do not assume Vk is influencing Vk minus L. So that causation is taken care of, but it is unbounded because it is sensitive to the units of V. This could be a temperature series, I could use any units for temperature and change the value of the autocovariance function. What did we do in the case of covariance to fix all those issues? We introduced correlation. 
Likewise, we will introduce autocorrelation, which is nothing but a standardized version of this autocovariance. So, nothing so mysterious about it, but what is important is to understand how from this autocovariance function I can discover what model is suited for the random process and that is what we will spend a lot of time on understanding the signatures of different processes. What we mean by signatures is what kind of autocovariance functions a particular random process uh, has and then do a reverse engineering. In practice I am given series I can estimate autocovariance function by looking at autocovariance function I will try to guess a suitable model and then estimate the parameters that is the sequence that we will follow. Tomorrow we will discuss a lot on autocovariance and autocorrelation. Okay?